just when you thought it was safe to watch the news. It's This Just In News with Dave Weirdo. We have breaking news from downtown Detroit. The all-seeing orb is on location. Orb, what's going on? Yes, Dave, we're here live in downtown Detroit where there's a giant turkey attacking the city. Where is it from? Is it gobbling up citizens? Have you made friends with it? Slow down, Dave. It is eating people. It looks peckish. It's a gift from the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And no, I'm not making friends with a mutant bird. Why did he send it to Detroit? He sent it to welcome Americans back across the border into Canada. It looks like some people will be crossing in the turkey's stomach. What's Mayor Dugan doing about this? Mayor Dugan has just released a call for turkey hunters to come to downtown and shoot it. And what does that call sound like? And see, it says, gobble, 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 uh, gobble, gobble. I see. I'm sorry, Orb, we have to break off to a more important story now. What? Detroit's being attacked by a big giant Thanksgiving feast and this isn't important enough? Breaking news! It's the 8th anniversary of This Justin News! What the? We're celebrating with an hour of comedy, guest starring these great comedians. Nobody! Michael Abel. Jade Esteban Estrada. Paula Maddox. And our headliner, Trish Sullivan. With co-host Christine Nelton. And now without further ado, the master of ceremony, the crazy creator of This Justin News, and the Randy Savage of Puppets, please welcome A.A. Rod! Yay! Yay! I'm going to celebrate with coffee and don't I? Oh my gosh, wow, thank you. We got introduced by a news uh, break. Uh, that's, uh, that's amazing, isn't it? Yes, it's This yeah. Justin News. Eighth anniversary, yes. You know, people ask me, what's This Justin News mean? It was my idea of news parody, or news satire, or whatever you want to call it. And that was kind of a clip of what I did tonight. I figured, why not? Let's uh, let Dave and Orb get back to work on the normal things they do. And you can see Detroit's being attacked by a giant turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens. <laughs> Justin Trudeau. I think uh, what I just read is, uh, oh, the mayor, Mike, the mayor uh, Dugan is going to send uh, you a middle finger, a giant middle finger. We have that big fist downtown Detroit. Apparently, we're going to send the giant middle finger there. That's great. Awesome. I'm kidding. Canada's great. Well, for some people, anyway. Oh. <laughs> we have an awesome show tonight. And you know what, guys? I want you to please welcome my co-host for tonight, the one, the only. Christine Alton, yeah! Hello everyone, it is so great to be here. We have an awesome lineup. So get ready to laugh, get ready to clap, maybe a little crying, I don't know. Get attacked <laughs> by a giant turkey, it's all good. <laughs> and I hope you don't cry, unless you're crying because you're laughing so hard. I mean, that's that's the whole thing. We're gonna have a blast and Christine and I are gonna have a, a heck of a time just remembering who you are. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I know who all you guys are. I know who all you guys are. But you know what? This is going to be an awesome show. Like I said, the eighth anniversary of this Justin News. And I started the show, I started my new, first news story with a turkey. So I figured that was good just to have another turkey for the story. So you know what? Let's get to our first comic up to the stage tonight, shall we? He is from Canada. Parts unknown. And I'm not sure everyone can see him. <laughs> so please welcome the stage. Nobody. Yeah. Thank you all. Wow. It is so great to be here. You, Aaron, Christine, thank you for having me, especially as the opener. I think because I'm very new and coming out, uh, I've been 30 something years in the underground and, uh, they know that I'm going to set the bar low, maybe even underground low, not <laughs> residential school low, but low, really low. So thanks for letting me go first and uh, yeah, fuck it up. So, oops, sorry, Ooh. bad language. I will try to use puck 
as much as possible. Being a Canadian <laughs> is our pet nation. And uh, we try to skate around stuff. So if I'm oh. passing the pack, I might be passing ah. the pack. <laughs> so this just in, there's been uh, actually a rumor in the underground that uh, a lot of medication is coming to America. It sounds like half the houses are going to be Ritalin houses. Uh, the other excited and crazy ones are going to be on Tetris and houses. Do not let these get mixed. These people can't mix because Tetrisin and Ritalin is poor man's heroin. And we'll have a bunch of wannabe heroes jumping up from everywhere in heroines. And we've got to be careful. So I'm actually going to put a limit on what I'm sending down from Canada. Don't worry. We'll still take care of everything else. But those are off the list. You guys got to manage your stuff a little better. Mm. On that note, I've always planned on going to SNL someday and also the Muppets, but I wanted to be a Muppet, but I wanted to host SNL and seeing Pete Davidson take off the last host and seeing the actual credentials that are in the cast. Like it's a huge cast this year and there's so many writers and they have so many credentials and I'm like, I'm never going to get in there. It's not going to happen. Maybe Pete might swing my way, but then I'd have to do it too. But hey, I, some prices are worth paying, right? Mm. That's just <laughs> in, right? <laughs> I do not, I'm not gay. Uh, I'm a cis man, which is uh, common intellect syndrome. Uh, I just was told this and it just seemed right and I haven't figured anything else out yet. So yeah, I go by that. <laughs> and, but I would do gay for pay. Uh, but it's like a hundred million dollars to start because I understand <laughs> virginity in its purity and i'm a virgin in that sense and man i'm worth it i really am we should all take pride in ourselves and this just in i came out this year uh publicly and the illuminati and cabal actually hired me to do negotiations because they haven't talked in years and the word got out. <laughs> so the devil actually contacted me and said he actually was looking for an advocate so i said first off if we're going to talk about this no one else is allowed to be an advocate. So instantly done. So nobody on the planet, other than this nobody, is allowed <laughs> to say, not to be the devil's advocate, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the devil's advocate, and I ain't saying nothing because he ain't paid up yet, so we ain't talking. He ain't in our world, and that ain't our business. What our business is is having some fun. I haven't even been watching the time to see how long it's going, but there's a lot of news. This just in from... I haven't actually been on your show before, but first time I got to talk about this, Norm MacDonald passed away this year. Mm. Now, it's a well-known thing that I like to do my own personal interviews. Uh, I don't have followers. I follow. So uh, I used to follow <laughs> Norm MacDonald. And the guy totally, totally avoided me like the plague, even before the plague. I wish he would have avoided me like cancer. Oh, <laughs> but the news of that got around. So Pete Davidson just trying to be safe. And, you know, he's in that click of weird information. He didn't want to actually have it. So he might actually do an interview with me soon. Well, yeah, mm. I'm happy about that. <laughs> it's good when you scare people. <laughs> I am actually a, kind of intimidating and uh, I, I roll with it everywhere I go. I'm able to blend into whatever crowd. I'm a little bit of a vampire that way. And, uh, I love being around Aaron, Christine, Jade, Michael, Trish, Paula, all you guys. I can't see any other names. I'd have to put down my camera. <laughs> it, we're only as good as those that we are around. It's the proven thing. It's just the way life is. And I, it's sad. Two days ago, I was going to do a live show in which I was one of the, either the bullet or up after the bullet. So open it up. For Sterling Scott, I don't know if any of you know him, but he is, more, uh, as far as I know, on the underground, he is the top comic in Canada. Hmm. And I blew my tire on the way there. And usually as a Boy Scout, I got all the spares. So I got my jack, got my spare down, the spare is flat because I haven't used it in five years. By the time I got my compressor, the show was over. Oh. Well, I'm not over, but it is so far gone, there's no way I'm jumping back in. And it was the first time in years that I actually said, I'm just gonna go home. Cause I don't usually give up, but that's intimidating. The seventh time on stage going on somewhere where someone professional is. Here in Zoom, I can just click out, delete, 
I'll never see a Facebook account of Dungeon Drag again. <laughs> but in reality, these people see my face. These people know who I am. They've seen me this year, and uh, I felt like I let them down, but I was also a little scared. So always remember this. Take care of yourself before you can take care of and help others. So thank you for my time. I am seeking counseling. <laughs> I think my time's up. <laughs> yep. All right. Let's give it up for nobody. Oh, let's get him back in. Let's get back in here. Let's have the spotlight. Thank you, nobody. Oh my gosh. And and where can we can we find you on social media at all? I mean, besides Facebook and Dungeon Drag. Uh, can I go by you? the Canadian nobody, but there's actually been popping up a few. So it, oh. it would be the Canadian nobody zero five six. <laughs> but no, you can't find me, but I can find you. And oh, really important. I, mean, and I am really underground, and it is hard to take notes. All you comics write like nothing. I, I, I take note, but I don't make notes. You guys are making notes, so I'm working uh, on that. As far as followers, I'm scared when people follow me, so maybe we'll wait till I get more content. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so if we happen to be in the area where you live uh which is in nowhere edmonton canada yes, is that right absolutely capital uh, of alberta so let's all guys let's just chip in for a couple to a bus tickets let's get to canada <laughs> let's go see if we can find nobody and you get to see my face for free i don't charge the people i meet if you want to oh. see it online $10,000, I'll send you Oh, my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> you know, uh, nobody, I have negative $10,000 to give you right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> we all have negative. Thank you, Aaron. And nobody, it's always great not to see you, but it's always great to see you on a show. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you, for coming. Oh, my gosh, that was one fucking great set. <laughs> uh, you really got to say the puck? Oh, my gosh. Yes, yeah, we're gonna say puck it up. I can tell that someone's <laughs> using all kinds of other words, and that's fine. We do a PG 13 show because clean comedy pays. Dirty comedy, I guess you have to pay for it. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is it dirty if you do it in the shower? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making are, a you point there. Of, are you out of soap and is the water on? That's the sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. I am that person that would wear the, the mask in the shower in that I'm game. Right. Not, I'm not even surprised. All right, back to drinking the Kool-Aid. I think it's <laughs> yes. Oh, let's get to our next comedian, shall we? He's all the way in Texas. And he's got an animated hunchback. Please welcome to the stage. <laughs> Michael Abels, everybody. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, I am Michael Abels. Um, I have I have three jobs. Uh, I'm a voice actor. I'm a techie, and I um. This is the, um oh, a uh, comedian. Um, <laughs> I'm allowed to forget stuff. I have teenagers. Uh, <laughs> It was, it's just stupid how much um, how much money we spend on teenagers, um, with uh, with their school projects and their social engagements and uh, ad placements in adoption <laughs> magazines. Uh, available immediately, scary, psychotic money vacuums. <laughs> I can't upload the ad, honey. The internet's cut off. We didn't, we didn't pay the bill. It's because of the money vacuums. Oh, it's a catch twenty-two. Uh, and when they start dating, uh, uh. so um, I have um, I have two words: happy and safe. Um, as in young man, if you keep my daughter happy and safe. I will allow you to remain happy and safe. <laughs> that, that was a speech I gave my oldest daughter's uh, boyfriends. Um, you know, some of them stuck around. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, threatening a teenage boy 
is is weird because there's no other circumstance where that's at all acceptable but when he's about to take your daughter out everybody's cool with it um <laughs> even the kid's dad <laughs> you tell him you'd castrate him if he looked at her with wanton eyes <laughs> no i i told him keep her safe and happy <laughs> thought you was a good dad <laughs> right. so yeah, a few years later second daughter uh came home one day and and uh announced i am pan you're gonna be peter pan that's amazing congratulations <laughs> i didn't even know you tried out no i'm pansexual oh and <laughs> sexual uh, oh okay um uh you know we we love you we're proud of you for finding yourself and being who you are and for teaching us new words <laughs> <laughs> and when she brought home her uh, her girlfriend i didn't give the speech and now i have to wonder if that makes me a sexist and i think it kind of does a little bit um I mean, I, I, okay i'm i'm a 50 year old white male if there's an ist to be had, there's a little bit of it in there somewhere. I don't, I don't want it there, but it, it's probably there. Mm. Uh, uh, and it, I, I was in my garage uh, two nights ago um, with, with when my, my daughter came out and gave me a physics lesson because she needed help with her physics problem and i don't remember any of that stuff uh it was it was an awkward conversation where she wound up just teaching me she thought i don't remember any of it she thought she was teaching me and worked out the problem herself and so in sitting there and nodding solved the issue that's the magic of parenting <laughs> Oh. It's scary how much uh, smarter kids are than I was. They they just they outgrew my help with schoolwork by about the fifth grade, somewhere maybe sixth, and, and that was that was. <laughs> you know, um, at the age that uh, my my daughter started doing calculus, uh, when when I was that same age. I was trying to convince a student teacher that she wasn't really that much older than me. Um, she would, it never worked out, but um, <laughs> they, uh, they're learning advanced math at the same age I was learning intermediate rejection. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, hard to relate to them because, um, I mean, I, I just never took schoolwork all that seriously. You know, um, they have straight A's and I barely passed. They have responsible and caring friends. And I had drinking buddies and <laughs> they have college and life plans. And I had drinking buddies. <laughs> oh. Let's see what else I'm, um, uh, let's, I'm, I'm a, I'm a disabled veteran. Ah, uh, woo, disabled veteran. Ooh, yeah. Woo. Hey. Uh, it's worth a woo, uh, because if that guy had been a better shot, I wouldn't be a disabled veteran. Uh, <laughs> be the other kind. Uh, I'm not a really obvious disabled vet. You know, uh, people think you must be, you know, missing. I, I'm just the kind of disabled vet that can't give you a good high five yeah, shoulder. So, um, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy, um, <laughs> see the light. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to end <laughs> saying <laughs> that I've gone on too long. And I'll tell you all about being a disabled vet next time. <laughs> oh, let's give it up for Michael Abels, everybody. <laughs>
and I know it's disability, folks. It's telling time. Yes. It is obviously telling time. That's the uh, disability. Oh, my gosh. That was such a fun set. Uh, Michael, where can we find you on social media? Okay. So on uh, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, it's uh, Mike S. Ables. So it looks like Mike Sables. Bathroom be closed because um, and then on, um, uh, let's see, uh, online, uh, the, oh, the website, uh, oh, yeah, voiceables, yeah, the website. voiceables.co or michael-ables.com. Cool. So Mike Sables. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you I didn't think it through. It's my you, middle okay. initial. Oh, so Mike Sables Minks and Furs? Is that exactly? Is that, oh, good. Because that's what I just looked up. You don't look like the same person. They have a he head of hair. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just that's just me. Oh, oh, okay. You wear a toupee or a wig? Is that what it is? Uh, only for the website photos. Oh, good. And he's on Clubhouse too, guys. He goes on Clubhouse. I, I've checked it out. I wish I had more time sometimes, but he jumps on Clubhouse. That's that app. And there's some funny stuff going on there too. So go check Mike a Mike Sables, Michael Ables. I'm not sure what <laughs> Michael Ables. That. Just look for the ball guy. It's fine. And I, I actually have a show coming up. Um, I, I'm starting a, a new game show uh, on Clubhouse. Uh, I can't give too many details right now, but we are about two weeks away. And uh, I will tell you if you if you're on Clubhouse, be on the lookout for the same game. The same game. Same game. The same game. Wow, that's It'll awesome. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. Thank you so much. We'll check that out. Man, Christine, someone else has got a game show going on. What do you know? It's Wait a minute. You and I have a game show. Now Michael's got a game show. We're having a game show fight. We're going to go out and back and oh. have a fight. <laughs> I think we need a whole game show block, like a half hour or hour of each game, and we just go all in a row and just have so much fun. And we, yeah, we could trade out. Yes. We could do stuff. I, I think it'd be Let's great because I think we could have, yeah, we could have an hour. I don't know how long your game show is going to be over there in Clubhouse. It's all audio. So what are we going to put up for video? Just a picture of Michael just looking like this? I mean, I'm <laughs> yeah. not quite sure what we're going to do. Oh, we'll just animate with puppets. That would suck. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh my gosh you know actually the next comedian actually the next two actually won my game show and i'm going to promote the heck out of it because it's always on every wednesdays it's a live recording of bombing run and that's where three comedians compete against each other where a mysterious comedian judge yes yes comedian because i had a skull show up and people were like wait a minute they don't have a body I said, no, that's a real comedian. And they compete against each other, and they see who's Joker Race, second and third, and Joker Race gets to be on this show. So please welcome to the stage, Jane Esteban Estrada, everybody. Yeah! Thank Woo! you. Thank you. I enjoyed being on that show, by the way. I had a lot of fun. Oh, and happy eighth anniversary for Thank this you. particular concept, I believe you clarified. Yep. Yep. Um, and happy to be here rounding out your Texas block. Uh, before I get started, um, I know some of you are looking at my lashes and my lips and thinking to yourself, great, another one of those freaking Trump supporters. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. My name is Jade Esteban Estrada. They call me the Prada Enchilada. <laughs> Designer on the outside, cheesy on the inside. But let's be honest, I'd rather be stuffed with meat. <laughs> <laughs> As you may have noticed, I am openly Mexican. <laughs> Homo estas. <laughs> you know, it's still tough out there for us gay Mexicans. Yeah, because some people actually choose to come out of the closet. I was chased out by the roaches. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like my lips, by the way? Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. The name of the name of the lipstick is But Officer. <laughs> <laughs> and I was supposed to wear this holiday outfit to my sister's wedding this past weekend, but I got there late and I missed the entire ceremony. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah, she was pissed. She was like, I can't believe you missed my wedding. I was like, yeah, girl, don't worry. I'll go to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so my entire family is from Texas, and I'm proud to be from the Lone Star State. But in my travels, I've noticed that people have a very strange view of us Texans. Case in point, a couple of years ago, I was at a cafe in Italy grabbing an espresso, and the cashier, noticing my accent, asked me where I was from. When I said Texas, his eyes lit up with excitement, and he goes, Mamma mia, a Texas. A bang, a bang, a bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> Apparently, our branding is Yosemite Sam. <laughs> <laughs> A cartoon with anger management issues. <laughs> so I consider myself to be Latino, but I wasn't really taught Spanish growing up, which was problematic because later on in life, I lived in Spanish Harlem in New York. And it was there I was surrounded by Puerto Ricans and Dominicans who would greet me with, Hola, papi, como estas? <laughs> My Spanish was so bad, I'd be like, Enchante. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know now means, where's the bathroom? <laughs> years after that, I was doing a show in Acapulco. And I did a radio show in the morning, you know, to promote the gig later on that night. And the guy asks me on the air in Spanish, are you happy to be in Acapulco? I said, si, estoy muy excitado. Well, his eyes got real big and he goes, yo me emocionado, right? And I was like, nope. <laughs> well, I found out during the commercial break that excitado over there exclusively means sexually stimulated. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm dubbed the horny guy on the radio. <laughs> Station in trouble. They were like, do you have anything to say for yourself? I was like, enchante. <laughs> So I was in a pickle, as we say in the gay community. <laughs> Are there any straight people in the house right now in the Zoom room? Yeah? yeah. yeah Thank you for overpopulating the planet, you guys. <laughs> I think we're good. As an LGBTQ plus size comedian, <laughs> I like to represent by wearing a boa during my show. And I've learned that straight crowds and gay crowds are completely different audiences, like, like night and day. Like straight crowds would be like, OMG, he had a boa. Gay crowds would be like, you mean he only had a boa? Vultures, <laughs> <laughs> all of them. So make some noise if you come from a crazy family. Woo! Yeah. As we say in Texas, can't live with them, can't shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> My sister's a hardcore Christian. My brother's a right wing conspiracy theorist. Gay Mexican comedian was the only thing that was left. <laughs> I have a very strained relationship with my father. Surprise. <laughs> It started when I was 11. He got me a tackle box for my birthday. Mm. A tackle box. <laughs> but I was so scared of my dad that I didn't have the courage to tell him how much I hated the gift. But it all worked out in the end because it's been the best makeup box I've ever owned. <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother's mantra was no mistakes. No matter what task you're assigned. No mistakes, which sounded a lot like namaste, but men. <laughs> he was a tough crowd. <laughs> but you guys are a great crowd. The little crowd that could. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of comedians will back me up when I say this. To us, you guys are like family. Mm. Because our own families refuse to see us. you know and that reminds me thanksgiving is coming up Mm. you know and every thanksgiving that i experience i realize that i'm getting older and getting older is crazy isn't it yeah i mean it's amazing how quickly you go from acid parties to acid reflux (laughs) 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 and i'm still trying to get rid of this this quarantine weight i put on in 2007 (laughs) (laughs) but i was always a size queen thank you very much everybody you've been a great crowd please be good to each other please be good to yourselves and on a serious note if you do consider yourself to be heterosexual and you've laughed at anything i've said here tonight (laughs) you're bi (laughs) (laughs) thanks guys let's give it up for Jane Esteban Estrada oh my gosh oh let's get me up there with him I'm gonna get up there oh and Jade where can we find you on social media social media you can find me um I'm the Prada enchilada on on (laughs) all the platforms so Instagram Twitter Facebook um I'm trying to get into TikTok but you know (laughs) <laughs> quick talk yeah, man no. <laughs> that's a tough deal man it's on the yeah. clock is all i can say and do you got any live shows coming up here in december i do up? i do i just got i just got done with a 22 day tour of the american southwest so literally wow. i got back two days ago i'm so excited mm, i do have yeah. a show um uh next week in san antonio another one in san marcus the week after that and then i want to thank you and my zoom comedy and my clean comedy family out there I am doing a show for the Washington State Nurses Association, Ooh, an hour of clean comedy. So thank you so much for helping me oh, <laughs> in this wow. movement, this movement that is taking over the country. <laughs> <laughs> an hour of clean comedy. That's amazing. An hour, I know. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I know, that's what I said. <laughs> an hour. You're going to keep them in stitches, I guess, for the Nurses Association. That would be great. <laughs> Oh my God, I got my first joke. Thank you. (laughs) By the time you're done, they'll have to call you the hot enchilada. (laughs) Nice. Christine, hello. I'm sorry I didn't say hi Hi. to you. Great to see you. It's so great to see you. You look fabulous tonight, by the way. You always look fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know what? I just want to say, Jay, just hit up Michael. He has uh, sables and uh, minks and furs, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, wow. Now, Jade is always knocking it out of the park. And look at that, an hour of comedy. If you hi, guys, I do an hour of comedy with five comedians and a co-host. Me by myself, you're doomed. <laughs> I will go through every joke I have and that might get pretty bad. I don't know. I, got, I don't have an hour set. I got maybe 10, 15 if I push it, and then I'll just repeat it three times. <laughs> I would say rinse and repeat, but you don't have hair. So it doesn't make <laughs> You know, I, I had, you know, I looked. I, I actually looked like a scruffy trade, you know, a little scruffy beard, had the scruffy hair. So I went to shave and I don't know about you guys, you guys with hair, you guys haven't made anytime. I went over my head three times. Okay. And I still missed a spot. So now I have a landing strip on the back of my head. <laughs> yes. Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> And on that note, that note. <laughs> let's get to our next comedian. She is oh, so funny. She was on Bombing Run, and I love her to death. Please welcome to the stage, Paula Maddox, everybody. Woo! Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, Thank you all for being so nicely in your boxes. It's so nice, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you all help me help? Give our, our host a clap he can tell his mom about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. 
Yeah, so my name is Paula. Um, I've decided recently that I'm just going to go by Paula from now on because um, I've realized that I gave my maiden name up way too early and then my married name messed all my things up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see, when I was, I was young and dumb and I was full of a lot of bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so I locked myself up on purpose, accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> you know i married my kid's dad so at least my monsters aren't bastards i'm super excited <laughs> and for me is all my kids have the same dad <laughs> <laughs> yep we're happy about that and the best part about that is none of my sisters could do that. So <laughs> <laughs> I win forever. <laughs> <laughs> they can't unscramble those eggs. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, what was talking to me though is realizing that sibling rivalry lasts this far out the nest. <laughs> <laughs> surprised me along with the motherhood thing you know like whoa late to the party and have enough information oh. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy yeah so um i have three kids i like to call them my domestic products <laughs> 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 um i've been blessed to raise six kids i'm actually raising my nieces now so yay me oh, oh. Wow. I love them to bits and it's like the it's like the creator likes my parenting style. So he wanted to keep me in the game, you know, like <laughs> you, honey, we like what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Either me squirm, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Whatever keeps you entertained, sir. Uh, no, but I've come to figure that the 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 act of making your monster and raising it, I think it's a form of black magic. <laughs> has all the requirements there's the chanting and the moaning you know because before you have that kid you're like please please i want a baby <laughs> and then you're moaning because you've made that monster you're like oh my god what did i do <laughs> sometimes poke stick you gotta be careful <laughs> And the second thing is sacrifice, because um, you sacrifice all your good parts to make these kids turn out decent. <laughs> Just decent. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing is offerings, you know, because you offer up your literal DNA for this job. That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Cosmic, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and that makes me realize that there's a very good reason it takes two people to make a baby. Yeah. Mm. Or because because God knew you would need a wit witness, you know. <laughs> yeah. In program, like who knew? <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, sadly, I lost my husband a few years back. Um, the creator decided to take him home early. Oh, son of a gun! No, he's actually helped me bust the kids through dream states. It's really weird, but we're going with it. You know, we're going. With it. I lost them on leap day, so it's hard to be sad, sad, you know, like, because I only have to be sad for four years. <laughs> <laughs> tender, oh. mercy, tender mercy, man, I tell you. No, but it's stressful, you know, raising these kids. And, and when the pandemic happened, my poverty really hooked me up, y'all, because I was prepared, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you stay home. When I got to looking around, you know, you watch a lot of TV, and I notice there's a lot of similarities between my life and that locked up show. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of innocent people running around here, you know, mm. and there's gangs, because I didn't know in, in the motherhood there's real gangs running around. Mm. Who knew? I only made the second kid because the first kid needed a playmate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor mommy didn't realize how long 24 hours a day really is. <laughs> <laughs> and they come pretty dumb you know because you know what they come from so it, it's just a vicious circle <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that's what nature intended y'all so buckle in strap on you're gonna be in for the ride of your life man really really is there any parents in the audience tonight Woo! Yeah. Yeah. 
days. And I'll take it to mean that you're not in jail, so the kids are doing okay, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's stressful having kids and, you know, stressful being in a pandemic. So I've decided that this Zoom comedy is going to be my new addiction. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the last time I let an addiction sneak up on me, and it was donuts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did also did not know you could get addicted to stupid stuff like donuts. Like, <laughs> yeah. there's no rehab for that. You have to say to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I to save myself? Of course I do, dang it. Of course I do. <laughs> In my defense, though, I was living on the reservation for a long time because I'm native. I know you can't tell by looking at me. I'm an incognito engine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <playing to that. laughs> But there wasn't anything cool out there. But when I came out town, there's a donut shop that's open 24 hours a day, y'all. <laughs> mm. It's so hard because even the crack house on the corner closes at Senna. <laughs> <laughs> What you girl to do? <laughs> oh. But I, I've been watching a lot of TV, you know. There's so much screaming and kids to ignore. I have to watch a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I accidentally noticed I binge watched that intervention show, y'all. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that a bad sign to binge watch nobody. <laughs> <laughs> confused <laughs> there was a whole lot of things a lot of symptoms i noticed in myself like i need more i need it more often you know not satisfied <laughs> yeah i think i broke my woofer y'all do you know what your woofer is we all have one do you know what it is <laughs> no no it's no. that thing when you're about to take a hit or you're gonna hit that and you go Woo! <laughs> 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 oh yeah but to cheer myself up i'm gonna go back to my favorite show it's that 600 pound life show <gasps> mm. yeah because i'm those people's gold plates so <laughs> <laughs> any day of the week twice on friday you know Man. my whistle part of me so i'm early in my motherhood i decided not to spank my children mm. Yeah. yeah, it was loud and proud. Loud and proud. Came out of the closet, told the whole family, I'm not spanking. My mom says, you're going to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> she says, honey, why didn't God put that crack in your butt, babe? I was like, what are you trying to say? She's all, because even God knew we would need to be thumped from time to time, and that helps absorb the blow. <laughs> 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 might be right about the spanking because because kids kids do a lot of dumb stuff you know mm. but they're supposed to you know and then my dad says well you're not spanking so you should probably know it's going to take you longer to grow the dumb out of the kids <laughs> <laughs> he's right i feel like whoopie from the color purple just beat him <laughs> just beat him <laughs> You need to know this when you're going forth in your life. There's a very good reason they don't put pregnancy on the list of STDs. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Nature will find her fools faster, so be careful. <laughs> <laughs> be blankety oh. careful. Mother Nature's favorite pun, you know, because <laughs> yeah, she needs a yeah. victim, you know. <laughs> so stay. Take your birth control and stay out of the parenthood, y'all. You'll be there forever. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Oh, oh. all right. Let's give it up for Paula Maddox, everybody. And Paula, where can we find you on social media? Paula Comedy on Instagrams and the Twitters and yeah. Cool. And you got any shows coming up? Um, no. Actually, no. I got to on that. If you know of oh, anybody. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know of a guy that might need a sh somebody on a show. So just maybe we'll just talk. 
All right, that was so funny. You know what, Christine? I, I I feel with Paula because I came I came from the school of hard knocks, because my dad used to dock the crap out of my ass for every time I made a mistake. <laughs> yes, I remember that quite fondly. Same with mine, and now I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> but that's for another show. But Paula, yeah, that's did you know dur during the pandemic? Did you know that you ha can have donuts delivered to your door? Like, oh my gosh, we have an app for that. And they just come right around. I had to write about the crack houses. I live in near Atlantic City and the crack house closes at seven, but the Dunkin' Donuts stays open 24 <laughs> seven. <laughs> well, you guys want to hear a funny, crazy story? Um, Cause I don't spank my kids. I have to do these crazy things to punish them. And we aren't allowed to have donuts in the house because of their bad behaviors. Like there's an embargo. It's been for three years now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, because they really liked the donuts because mommy was having them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. They got in a fight over donuts twice. The first time was wow. the second time you're cursed. Oh, my gosh. That's scary. I'm glad I didn't have that problem in our house. But then again, we didn't have a lot of donuts. We barely had food. I think that was basically it. You know, no, we had food, but it was always I grew up in Idaho, so we had a lot of potatoes. I can't oh. think of a meal that didn't have potatoes. <laughs> so, all right, let's get up. This show has gone by so fast, and now we're up to our headliner. Very, very funny comedian. She is all the way from the Windy City. Please welcome one of my favorites, Trish Sullivan, everybody. <laughs> Woo -hoo 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 Before I get started, I want to clear up a few things, just make sure everybody understands. No, I do not have a good meatloaf recipe for you. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm not your favorite lunch lady from your middle school cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I do have 47 cats in my backyard. And if you make me mad, I'll feed you to them. <laughs> that part's a lie. Um, I live in an apartment building. The cats are in the side bedroom. The rest is true. <laughs> <laughs> um, like Paula, I, I'm a parent. I'm, I've been, I was a single mom. I have three kids. They're all grown now. Um, and it was really important to me to keep them in line, keep them really well disciplined. I, Cause I felt like if I, I let them get out of control, they're doomed. I'll be fine. They'll, they'll be doomed. Um, and like, Paul, I didn't want to hit them. I don't, I didn't like to hit them. So I think my parents didn't hit us and we all turned out. Well, most of us turned out. Okay. Um, there's seven of us, only five of us have been arrested. I think that's not bad. Odds. Um, <laughs> and I guess technically I was arrested for, you know, I got pulled over for, a, I don't know, making an illegal right turn. And they didn't have my license with me. So they took me to the police station and somebody recently said, so you were arrested. I'm like, yeah, but if hand handcuffs aren't involved, is it actually an arrest? <laughs> 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 Anyhow, um, when the kids were little, it was really easy. I used threats and intimidation to keep them in line and it worked. But, you know, as Paula can attest, kids keep growing and they got <laughs> taller than me. I'm only five, four. My young, my shortest child is six inches taller than me. Whoa. So I had to switch, I had to switch tactics and, and I settled on psychological warfare. <laughs> <laughs> it worked great. When my sons, with my sons, I used to threaten to kiss them in front of their friends. Oh, it's really mean to do to a 12 year old boy. So oh, it was, so it was very effective. And with my daughter, I used to, um, I used to threaten to dance. <laughs> Sometimes I would just dance in public just for fun. Cause I knew she hated it, um, <laughs> but my best idea came to me one day spontaneously, not sporadically, well, sporadically, but spontaneously <laughs> as we were driving to the grocery store. And I said, if you run up and down the aisles, if you ask me to buy things like cookies and candy, stuff we can't afford, like meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sing like Ethel Merman. 
and it's oh. gonna sound like this there's no business like show business like no business i know <laughs> <laughs> They were perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought a pitch pipe. And before we would go out, I just tune up. <laughs> <laughs> They're extremely well behaved. And it, and it got to the point where I just had to take it out of my pocket. And they'd sit down and do their homework or go upstairs and clean their rooms or go out to the garage and change the oil on my car, whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I convinced them just as they were like becoming teenagers, which was very convenient. I convinced them that I was a psychic. Mm. I came home from work one day. I was like, you let your father in this house. He, he was not allowed in my home. Mm. You let him in. How do you know? How do you know? Like, I know everything. Don't you do that again, blah, blah, blah. The truth of the matter is, I could smell his cologne. He wore, <laughs> he wore polo and it was like a cloud around him. And once that burned into your brain, you never forget that smell. No. Nope. So anyhow, that was really good for them. Um, so as I alluded to earlier, I am uh, older. Actually, I think I'm older than all of you on this set, uh, on this show. Um, and so I know a lot of things um, and uh, I have a lot of experiences. And recently I was watching a conversation among younger comedians about performing in front of old people. And the advice this guy was getting, he, you know, he's asking for help, he's got a show. The advice of getting was driving me crazy. Don't swear. Don't talk about sex. They won't understand your pop culture references. Hmm. So with swearing, I, did I apparently these the, they all thought that you know they you turn 13, you learn all the swear words, um, because you've invented them. Nobody's sworn in, until you, you're the only one who cusses. The word that, the word Aaron doesn't want me to say, the F word has been in the English vocabulary since the 15th century. That's before Shakespeare was born. People, people swear, <laughs> sex. The people they're talking about, like 10 years older than me, they're the people who invented the sexual revolution. They were, <laughs> They were doing things to each other in communes and at uh, the street at protest marches before these people's parents knew each other. Um, <laughs> these youngins, it's like they invented edging and rimming and s and &M. People <laughs> have been doing these things to each other since before human beings had the capacity for language to describe what they were doing to them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, and by the way, Christine, you mentioned spanking. Spanking's too good for children. Um, that should be safe. That should be saved for us. <laughs> <laughs> I've been good. Will you spank me? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that uh, I'm looking at my notes and I can't. Oh, there's what I wanted to talk about. So one of the best things about being a person my age is that when we were dating and meeting new people, we didn't have to deal with dating apps. There was no swiping and scrolling and reading profiles that may or may not be accurate where people are pretending to be funny or God worse, they think they're smart. So <laughs> we all know how it is when people who think they're smart are around. Um, but the best thing for me and most women my age, is nobody sent us dick pics. Mm. And it's not that the technology didn't exist, it did. It's called a Polaroid camera. <laughs> but the film was super expensive. It was like a dollar a, a photograph. So, you know, that's like $20 in today's money. So it was kind of a commitment. But, you know, a guy could get up and he could take the shot and he could 
wait. That's where they got the <laughs> stupid song, Shake It Like a Pillar. Oh, it's a bad angle. Now he's got to do it again from a different angle. <laughs> <laughs> and he's into it for $40. And if you're going to spend $40 for headshots, shouldn't you hire a professional? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but, if you, but, you know, on the other hand, professional headshots are so impersonal. And if the dick pic is impersonal, does it have any value at all? <laughs> I know. So um, another thing about us elderly and uh, youngins, how we're different, is the way we use technology. This is my cell phone. I use it to make phone calls. <laughs> That's it. I, you know, I look at Facebook or I'll look at Instagram, but it's a fucking phone. Oh. <laughs> Every time. Every time I get so close to the end. Damn it. It's all right. I use, at least it was only once, Aaron. It'll be easy to edit out. Yeah. I'm gonna... I use it to make phone calls. But, and I'll send some texts. But text should be three words long. I know young people send it. I know somebody, 22 years old, wrote a chapter of a book on a cell phone with his thumbs. Oh. I don't know how he doesn't have arthritis already. But, <laughs> but it's coming. <sighs> it's coming. But text should be three words long. On my way. Is he there? <laughs> Is there weed? Three <laughs> just be careful. Yeah, just the little simple stuff. Anyhow, um, okay. I have one more joke that I'm to tell you guys, and then I'm going to stop. It can't be Zoom comedy, and it cannot be in the COVID era if there isn't at least one COVID joke on the show. So, here's the thing. <laughs> so I noticed early in the pandemic that the countries that have done best are the ones that had um, women as leaders. Germany had Angela Merkel, and they did really well, especially in the early, early months. And Iceland did really well. And New Zealand was incredible. The whole pandemic, They've had like 2,000 cases and 125 deaths. In Illinois, where I live a year ago, we had 15,000 new cases and 145 deaths in one day. So I think that shows that we need more women in leadership here. And to that end, I'm volunteering to be queen. Ah. <laughs> Hold on, I can't get this thing to stay because I'm holding my microphone. <laughs> very professional. I'm mm. very professional. All right, here's my damn crown. So once I get this COVID bull stuff taken care of, let's do it again. You're fine. COVID stuff taken care of. I have a couple of decrees I'm going to put in place. First of all, from now on, your diet, it should be seen and not heard. <laughs> tell me what you're eating. I do not care. Nobody cares what keto is. Don't explain it. We're all fine. I know your diet makes you feel good about yourself. You know what makes me feel good? Masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> so I promise. I won't tell you how many times a week I'm changing the batteries in my vibrator. If you'll stop telling everybody about your personal relationship with Kale. <laughs> <laughs> now, my other decree is about avocados. Um, from now on, when you go into a store, avocados will be in one of three bins. Ready today, ready in two days, ready in four days. Because with avocados, you never know what you're gonna get. They're kind of like men. They're either too hard or too soft. And there's this like 15 minute window when they're just perfect. And if you miss that, you're screwed. <laughs> or not, depending on the age of the guy. <laughs> so uh, that's my time. I'm Queen Trish. Have a great night. Oh, let's give it up for Trish Sullivan, everybody. Oh my gosh, that was so funny. Queen Trish, let's give it up for Queen Trish, yes. Uh, and where can we find you on social media, Trish? You can find me at Hot in Here Comedy on Instagram and Facebook, and also uh, this.trish on Instagram. 
This dot Trish. Awesome. You got any other shows coming up? You know, I'm kind of taking the next month uh, easy, but mm. uh, hot in here, is it hot in here is my monthly Zoom show, and it's going to be the third Friday in December, which I think is the 17th. But 17th, you know, yes. It is the yes. 17th. So, yeah, December Sweet. 17th. Thank you so much, uh, Trish. That was awesome. Oh, my gosh. We, we can all relate to you. I know we can. But that was amazing. Oh, my gosh. That was a great show, wasn't it, Christine? Oh, yes, that was amazing. Oh, my gosh, Trish, you were just amazing. Masturbating and cats, and I just see myself as you in the future. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm already started. I got two cats and way more of the other things. Way more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh i want to give all our comedians a big round of applause tonight oh my gosh that was so great you guys rock oh let's get the list up here because i don't remember anyone's name tonight because i have <laughs> nobody i have nobody was giving up for nobody michael Kate esteban estrada paula maddox and again trish sullivan and to my co Host and co-producer Christine Knowlton. Let's give her a big round of applause. Woo. Oh my gosh. Thank you for making this a great anniversary show for me. Eight years of playing new satire and having puppets and trying to make something out of it and then making a comedy club out of it. Who knew I could do all this? Well, my <laughs> wife did, and she said, Why? But anyways, <laughs> that was let's a give it up. Let's give it up for AAA Ron. Yes. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that, guys. And uh, the next show is December fourth. I do have a special show I am doing for the Bay Area Arts and Entertainment Cooperative, December third. Now that isn't a clean show. That isn't a clean show. I'm letting you know that isn't a clean show. So. If, I am still looking for people, but uh, hit me up. We'll, you know, if you want to say the F word, by golly, you can say the F word. Christine was just on that show. It was awesome. It was a cool show. That's December 3rd. That'll be 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern on that day. And But December 4th is just the normal, hey, let's play PG-13 comedy on this Just a News Comedy Club show <laughs> at the 7 p.m. Eastern time. But that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of it. And this has been an oddly funny production. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good Happy night, day. This has been an oddly funny production.